What's going on, everybody? Jay Lawson here. And today I'm bringing you a little bit more uh, complicated math word problem. We are going to go into something a little, we're going to move forward and go into something a little more complicated because I want to talk about uh, quadratic equations and factoring and how those can help you answer uh, real life math problems. And then once we understand these concepts that are a little more advanced than the ASVAB level math, going backwards is going to make those that much easier to grasp. So this is considered as like a stepping stone into, into an adva more advanced level, but it's also where, you know, if we, if we just break it down to common sense and explain it, it's easy to understand. So what we'll do is look at this uh, question and then we'll uh, figure out exactly what's going on and, and go ahead and go into the steps of solving it. So the question says, there is a party getting underway in Beverly Hills. Everyone was drinking, dancing, and having a great time. If everyone shook hands with every person at the party, how many people were at the party if 45 handshakes took place? So basically, we got a party going on, and it seems like everybody there is shaking everybody else's hand. And we know that 45 total handshakes happened, so we need to come up with a formula for that. Um, I'm also, at the end, I'm going to show you a simple way to solve it if you have a problem like this, if you have a low number of people but if you have a high number uh then you can't i mean you could still solve it that way but it would take you a lot longer doing it uh freehand but um so so what do we want to know here the information we want to know is we want to know how many people were at the party and the information that we that we currently know is that there were 45 handshakes so how many people does 45 handshakes uh, make, make for her or whatever? Um, so what we want to do is first set up our variable. Uh, we're going to use variable n for the number of people because that's what we're looking for. First and foremost, we want to know, bottom line, how many people were at this party. Now, we need to, before I go into the second part, Let's think about what's happening here at the party. If let's take it down to a lower number, like three, let's say me, you and Joe are at the party. And that's it. Just me, you and Joe. How many handshakes is that going to be? The answer is going to be. Each person is going to have two handshakes. So I'm going to shake your hand and Joe's hand. You're going to shake my hand and Joe's hand. And Joe's going to shake your hand and my hand. So everybody's going to do two handshakes. So everybody is doing N minus one handshakes. The number of people minus one. That's going to give us the value of the other people. Because obviously if there's one person at the, if there's three people there and you're shaking two hands, you're shaking the other people's hands. So our N minus one value is going to be for the other people at the party. Now, it would seem logically that we could just say, hey, if we have N number of people, we should be able to multiply that times N minus one other people. And that will give us the number of handshakes. Because if it was three people and you multiply that times two handshakes, that'll give you the total number of handshakes, right? Wrong. That doesn't give you the number of handshakes because you have to think about this. When I shake your hand, you're also shaking my hand. So if we're getting a total value of the people times the number of other people, it's all inclusive of it's counting me shaking your hand. Like 
J to U, and it's counting U to J as two handshakes, when in actuality it's just one handshake. So it's counting two for every one. It's counting you shaking mine and me shaking yours. So what we have to do is offset that in our formula. And the way we do that is we divide by two, giving us n times n minus one, in parentheses, over two handshakes. So n, the number of people, times n minus one, which is the number of other people, if we take that number and divide it by two, we're going to get that many handshakes at this party. Now, we already know how many handshakes that we got uh, at the party. 45, right? So all we got to do is take n times n minus 1 over 2 and set that equal to 45. Now, the thing that sticks out to me here is that, that darn 2. We don't want that 2 being there like that. We want to get the integer isolated by itself so it looks a lot easier to work with so we need to get that two out of the denominator and the easiest way to get a two out of a denominator in a situation like this is just multiply both sides by two because if you think about it let's say you had one half right you multiply that by two the twos cancel out or you could think of it as the twos become two over two, which is one. So to get rid of that two, we need a two. We need to multiply by the two over one or multiply by two on both sides. Because remember, if you do something to the left side, you got to do it to the right. So if we want to be left with n times n minus one on the left side, we have to be left with 45 on the right side. I'm sorry, 90 on the right side because we have to multiply the 45 by 2. So we're going to do that. But let's also, in the same step, go ahead and factor and deal with that, the numerator. n times the, the n minus 1 in parentheses. So what we want to do is take the n times the other n. That's n squared. And then you got a negative 1 times an n, so that's minus n. So n squared minus n is equal to 90. Now what we need to do is go ahead and bring that 90 over and set the right side equal to 0 so that we can solve for n. The reason why we're doing that is because if we can get a 0 value, we can plug numbers in to make n make that whole side equal to zero. And I'll show you in a minute. When you have, so, when, so we're going to be using n squared minus n minus 90 equal to be equal to zero. And that form there is actually a quadratic equation. Because quadratic equations in this case are used to uh, factor and then set one portion equal to zero. So n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to zero. The quadratic equation can be factored though. And the way we factor that is, we set two sets of parentheses multiplied by themselves equal to zero. And we're gonna break down this n squared minus n minus 90. And the way you do that is you have values, you have two values of n and you have two numbers. So you'll have n and what you do in this case is you just start thinking of numbers that multiply factors that multiply and add up to or multiply to 90 and then also multiply to n squared. The n squared is easy. We know it's just going to be n in the first position and then n in the first position in the second. But the, uh, the second numbers, you have to be creative. I mean, when, when you see 90, a lot of times you think 10 and negative 10 and 9. But since it's negative 90, obviously one of them has to be negative. And because you have a negative, you have a negative n in the middle. 
you need to make the 10 negative in this case, uh, these, the first value. So what we'll do is we'll do n minus 10 and n plus 9 equal to 0. Remember, these values are multiplied together. So you see we have the n minus 10 on the left side multiplied by n plus 9, and we're going to set that equal to 0. The reason why we set it equal to 0, like I said, is now we need to just look at how can we make, all we have to do is make either one of these sides equal to 0, and 0 multiplied by any number is 0. So to solve for this, all we have to do is either make, is, is go ahead and say, okay, how can we set the left side equal to 0? And with that, n could be 10. And for the right side, n could be negative 9, because negative 9 plus 9 is also 0. So the values for n, for the number of people at the party, are 10 and negative 9. But that's not the answer because in quadratic equations you have to look at the what the question's asking. Does it make sense that negative 9 people would be at a party? No, it doesn't. The only value in this case is 10 that is going to be used for the answer. And if you have 10 people at a party, they will do 45 handshakes. Now, I told you I was going to tell you an easier way to do this type of problem when you have everybody dealing with another person at the same situation. One thing you can do, even with a relatively low number like 10, is you can take the, all you have to do is simply add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 dot 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 dot, and then eventually you get to the to the n value, but the last value that you get before you hit the quantity you're looking for, which in this case would be 45, all you have to do from there is simply add one more. So in this case, it would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 45. And then, so we remembered the plus 9 was last, right? But the answer is not 9. You have to add 1, and you can get 10. And that's a quick way to solve problems like this if you ever run into something like this. But if they say, hey, you know, 840 handshakes took place, it's, it's going to be a little bit more time-consuming to solve it like that. So I hope this uh, explanation made sense to you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, if you always aim at legendary, you will land in success. I'm out.